Okay guys, it is the Def King here back with another video. Welcome back to another video guys. And um I told you I'd upload again. So in today's video, we are going to be learning about while loops breaking. So we're gonna learn about breaking loops or loop breaking. It's a pretty useful feature. You might not use it too often, but it is something you definitely should know for uh, you know the future. So anyways, it's basically what loop breaking is. It's pretty self-explanatory. It's when you have a loop, right? And basically you break out of it. Now I'm gonna give you some some practical uh, you know like functionality for it, and it'll actually do it um, with a rain spawner. So remember the last video, guys. In the last video, I made a rain spawner. So if you didn't watch that, definitely go watch it now because you're gonna, you're gonna need to know how to make that stuff or how to do that like instances. So so definitely go watch that video first. But anyways, in the last video, I made a rain spawner, right? Now I want to make the rain spawner, but instead, when it spawns 50 rain, I want the loop to stop. So I'm gonna show you what, how I do that. So, anyways, let's start. So we're gonna go ahead and do this. So we're gonna make the rain spawner. So let's go ahead and do while true do, and then wait. Actually, my game just crashed because I forgot to do wait, and I had to restart. <laughs> anyways, so make sure you type your wait, or else your, your studio will just crash. And then we're gonna do uh, local rain equals instance dot new so we're making the rain spawner right now guys this is going to spawn rain and then we can use the loop breaking to uh to stop it once it has enough rain so let me show you what i mean so we're going to go ahead and just go ahead and program this real quick and then um we'll get back to the loop breaking so let's go into rain position um vector three dot new uh zero or no 0 0.5 0.5 two and then 0.5 uh, no, actually, that's the size. So rain dot size, and then rain dot position is equal to vector three dot new, and now we can do zero, ten, or actually we'll do fifteen, zero, and then we're gonna set the transparency to rain dot transparency equals 0.5. and then you know what? We can actually do it unanchored too to make sure it doesn't anchor. All right, there we go. So we're gonna go ahead and spawn this in and I'll show you the rain spawner. So this is the rain spawner, guys. You should know what this is if you watched last video, but yeah. So basically it's raining, okay, it's pretty cool. So we have that there. And now what we wanna do is make it stop once it hits a certain um, like a certain time. We're not certain time, but we wanna break out of this loop, okay? Because right now, this loop will just run forever, like literally forever, because it never has anything to stop it, because it's well true do. Now let's do this. So we're gonna go ahead and make a new variable up here. We're gonna name it local um, rain spawned. So amount, the amount of rain spawned, and then we're gonna make that zero because right now zero rain is spawned at the top of the script. And then we're gonna go ahead and do uh, put this in here, and we're gonna right every time we run the loop, right every time the loop runs, it's gonna say if rain spawned equals equals or no is greater than or equal to fifty, then break. Now okay, look. So you never seen this word before, right? This is break. So basically, what it's saying is. It's gonna, okay, the script's gonna run, right? It's gonna see local rain spawn equals zero, okay. And then it's gonna get to the loop. It's gonna do, if rain spawn is greater than or equal to 50, then break. Now, rain spawn is currently equal to zero, so it's nothing's gonna happen, right? But if it is, if it, if it is, you know, 50, then it's going to break out of the loop and go on with the script. Now, I'll actually put a print here to show you guys that it works. So we're gonna go ahead and put, the loop is finished, is finished. Okay, there we go. And then, but actually, nothing will happen right now. The loop will still run forever because I never added a rain spawn like increase, right? So what we want to do is every time the loop runs, we want to add one to rain spawn because every um, every time the loop runs, you know, one piece of rain spawns. So we're gonna do rain spawn equals rain spawn plus one. Now that might sound a little confusing, but basically what this says is rain spawn the variable. So let's say it's zero right now. So zero rain spawn plus or no, it equals. So it equals the rain the amount of rain already spawned so rain spawn equals like five plus one i i can't explain it man but <laughs> anyways i hope you understand but anyway so let's go ahead and do this and it should work unless my syntax is wrong i don't know but okay so here we go and okay it worked okay all right let, let me do that again let's set that to 100 actually or like five or like oh, 250 or something like that okay all right so now it's at 250 so now once 250 pieces of rain is spawned the loop will end so as you can see here it's raining right and I put that print function at the end that says loop finished. And then as you can see, it's raining. Now, once it gets to 250, it says loop is finished and it stops raining. So there you go, guys. That's it right there. That is loop breaking. Basically, whenever it happens or whenever, you know, the loop is finished or whenever, you know, it's the condition is true um, and use the break thing. You use this word break. It breaks out the loop. Okay. That's what breaking does. Pretty simple stuff. Now, 
Um, in the next video, guys, I'm going to be teaching you about the random function, where basically we're going to use the rain spawner again. Okay, I'll use the same one. And we're gonna, what we're going to do is actually make the rain, right? We're going to make the rain random. Okay, so we're going to see how that works in a second, guys. Get ready for that, and I'll see you in the next one. All right, peace out, guys. And uh, also, guys, if whatever, a lot of people ask, like, what do I do when you're not uploading? Or not when you're not uploading, but, like, what do I do to practice? Uh, one thing I would do is I would go find a game. Now, right now, you guys probably don't have enough experience or enough knowledge to create a whole game. But I would try to make an obby. You can definitely create an obby. I told you guys how to make events and stuff. And uh, and I told you guys how to, you know, spawn blocks. I mean, it's pretty it's simple. <laughs> but, um, so, yeah, you can definitely make an obby. So, I would make an obby or something. Or just make something. Like, just challenge yourself. Like, find a, like... A really like really small game with what I used to do I used to just copy games like not like literally copy them but like I would just remake it right to learn and I actually learned a lot from that guys so definitely do that and also guys I'm not sure if I told you or not but use your object browser guys this is a very useful feature if you go into parts right actually I did tell you guys about this but it tells you all about like all of the properties of the part and all of the events of the part it's very useful and now people use a wiki for that but I guess you could use a wiki but the wiki is kind of confusing so if you don't want to get confused and you want to just stay here on Roblox Studio then you can use this but if you want to get more advanced go to the wiki and uh, you can read about it there anyways guys that is it I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys in the next one peace